efforts continue after Hurricane Ian. Many are now looking to the future, and a question that a lot of engineers and scientists are now asking is how to rebuild Southwest Florida stronger after the storm. Fox 4 meteorologist Andrew Shipley spoke to experts from across the country to find out what lessons mm. that we have learned from Hurricane Ian. Yeah, since Hurricane Andrew in 1992, Florida has been at the forefront in using lessons from hurricanes to improve our infrastructure for the next storm. Now, what exactly goes into this? Well, civil engineering experts are doing now uh, after Hurricane Ian is now going back and looking at the construction. And while that new construction that we have had since uh, Hurricane Charlie, for example, or Hurricane Andrew did well during the wind event, they didn't do so well against the storm surge from Hurricane most significant damage is because of the storm surge. There are like a lot of examples that I've seen where newer homes, they perform very, very well from a wind point of view, wind design point of view. They suffer damage due to storm surge. Dr. Yuan Azizis studies wind engineering with the Extreme Event Institute at Florida International University. He was on the ground shortly after Ian studying the damage and from what he saw, the building codes addressing wind appeared to be making a difference. So there is there's definitely like a correlation between how we design buildings, you know, the new buildings and the damage observed. And while building codes battling against wind are working, those codes against storm surge are still lagging behind. The problem with storm surge is building to resist the forces of advancing water, especially when a cubic yard of water weighs a ton. Uh, so you can go brute force about it and say I'm going to fortify against it, including the wave effect, which is a tall order. Or you can say, well, let it go and run through the first floor as a sacrificial floor, have partitions that will break through. Dr. Michelle Bruno is a State University of New York distinguished professor and engineer who studies disasters and lessons we can learn from them. He says that for multi-story construction, that sacrificial floor can be used for parking, recreation, with the understanding that that floor could be lost. If the upper stories um, can keep the integrity of their facade, damage to windows and doors so wind does not get inside, water doesn't get inside, there's no water penetration. If the roof can be properly tied down, which many of them seem to have had in the more recent construction, then essentially that enclosure is protected. When it comes to lifting homes, that's another option. Dr. Zisa says the wind load underneath the structure is something the American Society of Civil Engineering is starting to set standards for. But now if we elevate what is happening underneath, you know, that was actually a recent addition to the latest AESC 7 standard. Uh, and now it includes loads recommended design uh, design guidelines for elevated homes. Now, as we rebuild, Dr. Bruno says we need to ask ourselves what level of risk are we willing to take ahead of the next hurricane? Question of if it's a question of when and living there is assuming that risk. And having, say, for example, an elevated first floor where you accept that when the hurricane will come on shore, water will just wash through the building and take whatever is there is part of assuming the risk. Dr. Bueno says you have to ask yourself the question, can I live with that? And if the answer is yes, you're already ahead of the game. Meteorologist Andrew Shipley, Fox 4.